When I was little, I remember everyone used to play with their Barbies and such, but I absolutely loved toy cars. I would always be annoying my cousins to race against our toy cars. Now recently, I've been getting that itch to make a game again, so I decided to make a AAA racing game in one day. Now, how the heck did I manage this in not only one day, but actually in a couple of hours? And I know what you must be thinking, AAA, this is a scam. Well, if we go to Wikipedia, we can see that AAA is an informal classification, which generally means that a game has a higher development and marketing budget than other tiers of games. However, nowadays, it's a little hard to make a distinction between some AAA games and some indie games. Indie games usually referring to a smaller team with a smaller budget, even a solo developer. With the capabilities of graphics engines such as Unity and Unreal, as well as an ever-expanding marketplace to buy assets which help developers make their games in a much faster time, this term is highly variable. And so I decree that this game is a AAA game by my own biased reasoning and also to make the title a little bit more attractive. But that doesn't answer the question of how the heck I pulled this off in a couple of hours. As I mentioned previously, the big magic secret word to all of of this is called assets. Game assets can include graphics, characters, environments, music, special effects, and sound effects. Literally almost anything in a game is an asset. And Unity has a great asset store, one of the best in my opinion, where there are thousands of assets at a reasonable price, which can greatly speed up development. And I want to thank them for sponsoring this video. The assets that I used in this game are all on discount for the Unity Summer Sale. Currently, there is the Speed Up Development Sale from August 9th to August 22nd, which gives you 40% off a selection of a ton of editor extensions, tools, scripts, and more to speed up your game. And you can use the code SPEEDUP2022 at checkout for more percent off. And from August 22nd to August 31st, there will be the best of indie sale, which will be a mix of the speed up development sale and the previous inspiration sale, which I also have a video on. And you can use the code best of 2022 at checkout for more percent off as well. So let's go through the journey of how I put all these assets together to make a self-proclaimed AAA racing game in only a few hours. So first things first, for a racing game, I need one, a car, and two, a road. Now there are a couple of road assets out there in the asset store. I just used the Easy Roads 3D asset in the asset store to set up the road system for our racetrack. So before actually making a racetrack, I had to make a terrain. And I'm going to be honest with you, I haven't made a terrain in years. So it took me a while to figure out just how to elevate the terrain and paint textures on it. But after I got the hang of it, it was actually pretty easy to set up. Unity has a built-in terrain system, which you can automatically elevate certain areas by painting on a quad with a brush and then you can use another brush to actually paint a texture on your ground. So this is really useful for giving it a nice feeling and mixing different textures together such as a grass texture, a mountain texture, a rock texture, etc. So after spending quite a while trying to set up a sort of nice looking terrain, and if you're interested in a tutorial for terrain, comment down below because I think this is a really useful skill to learn. Now you can actually place a road because you have a terrain. So to place a road, it's pretty simple. All we have to do is import the Easy Roads 3D asset and you have to add a road network to your scene. So this manages your network of roads and once you add a network to your scene you can actually start to add roads by directly clicking on the terrain by holding down shift and clicking on the terrain the positions where you want your road to go and so like that you can easily plop down the points and it will automatically construct the road for you and curve the road on its spline a spline just adds curves together and makes a continuous set of curves in math i'm going to be honest the easy roads 3d is literally so extensive and has so much amazing things you can make roads you can add items next to the roads it automatically adjusts for elevation in the terrain you can build bridges you can build tunnels within mountains it's super cool however there is quite an extensive learning curve so i did have to fiddle with this with really quite some time and i never quite figured out how to delete a point on the road so I made the road, I made it curved, I built the road so that it automatically adjusts the terrain, and now it was finally time to add the car. 
For the car, there are several assets. However, I used the realistic car controller on sale for 40% off. And this was super easy to add onto the scene. All I had to do was drag in a prefab of the car object along with a prefab of the camera to follow the car, the RCC camera as it's called. And voila, we had a working car on our scene. And they also come with a ton of scenes to try out different cars and such and change the settings. It literally has so many settings on such specific car things that I have no idea what I was reading, but I'm sure a person more inclined to cars would understand. And they have also great documentation. You can destroy the cars, which is really cool. And they even have a scene where the cars get annihilated, which is actually kind of fun. Anyways, we put our car in the scene and that's it. The game's over. Goodbye. Just kidding. We actually have to make the game fun to play by adding some challenges. So luckily the realistic car controller comes with an AI controller. So we can add more cars to the scene and then give them an RCC AI controller component and automatically the AI will take over and control the car for us. Then you have to add a waypoint container to the scene, which lets you add waypoints that the AI should be following, which is really simple. I just clicked on the scene where I wanted the waypoints to go and it added them to the list. Now I couldn't quite figure out in the time I had how to take the points from the easy road and use those as a waypoint, but there is definitely a way to do that. And there's even a way to use map data within easy roads. So easy roads can mimic real life map data. So let's see how the game looks now with a little more challenge. Looking awesome, but now the game is kind of boring and no one's gonna play my game if it doesn't look good. So I looked up and I realized the sky was pretty bland and the Sky Master Ultimate is also on sale, which is super, super cool. All I did was import the package, drag an existing prefab, and after some tweaking, I had a night sky. Now I'm gonna be honest, this package was also very extensive and there's a lot, a lot, a lot of properties who change and I did not have time to change those properties and learn what each of these properties are. So I decided to go with the night sky because it was the easiest one to tweak. This is a pro tip for game dev. If you're having trouble with something or are running out of time, just go with the easier option and say that it's a feature. Now we have this awesome night sky. So it's finally time to make the race logic. For the race logic, I decided to use the package modular 3D text to display some 3D text in front of the player before the game starts, counting down three, two, one. And for that, I used a curatine, which if you didn't know, you can actually make the start function a curatine or coratine. Uh, I'm pretty sure I pronounced it wrong many times in my YouTube career, but that's okay. And I just counted down within the start function. And so before I counted down, I actually disabled the movement for the cars. But after the coroutine is finished, I enable the movement. So the cars, the AI car and the player can actually move the car. After that, I made a small goal area with a trigger box collider. And so once the player passes through that trigger, the game is finished. And since the start of the game, a timer is being run, which counts how long the player has been on the track. And once the player has finished, their score is displayed. Now this looks great and all, but I feel like it's still lacking. What can we do to add more feeling to a game? There are several ways to do that. Right now, I thought some particle effects and post-processing were the best bet. So for the particle effects, I used the all-in-one VFX toolkit, and they have tons of prefabs that I can just drag onto the scene. And already it makes such an impact because it looks more professional and fun. Now I can add some post-processing to our camera, which post-processing basically adds on effects after the main camera rendering is finished so that the game can have a more unique look. And after some tweaking, along with some sound effects, this was the final product.
maybe you don't consider it a triple a game but it is one in my heart and will always be and before i leave you i just want to point out some other cool assets that are on sale that would also really benefit racing games one of them is called highway racer which is a complete project with car customization and it's basically an infinite runner but for cars think crossy road but mustangs is very easy to set up and great to get your next game started off now this one i really liked it's called curved world and this basically gives you the impression that your world is being curved it's basically a shader that displaces the vertices on your meshes and you can twist and turn the road in any way you like or really you can use this for any sort of game i think this is a really good asset mega shapes is also on sale it is another way to make roads and splines which i do recommend checking out the a star pathfinding project Project Pro is also on sale, and this is a great solution for pathfinding within your scene, which pathfinding basically means finding the path from one point to another, and it's commonly used for AI. There's a lot of different types of AIs, and this project supports a lot of awesome features. And finally, the Master Audio 2022 AAA sound package is literally amazing for audio. Every struggle that you have faced with audio, the Master Audio 2022 most likely has a solution for that. It's basically a solution where you can manage your audio within one manager and tweak each audio, as well as provide randomized variations to each audio type, positioning audio for ambient sounds. And it's also great for multi player so i do hope you enjoyed this video if you did make sure to hit that like button subscribe and hit that bell notification icon and thank you to unity for sponsoring this video if you're interested in these assets feel free to use my link in the description it is an affiliate link so it helps me out at no cost to you and so with that i'd like to thank all of my patrons for the support it's really appreciated and makes these kind of videos possible with that i'd like to thank my new patrons in the enthusiastic tier we have Kristen. Danny, Yuval, Max Fax Surhior, First Gear Games, Nick, Christian, Aroundai, TTT, Druid, Sufian, XX Raging Killer X, Jurgen, I Just Want to Ride, and Jake. Thank you so much for all of your support. It is super, super appreciated. If you're interested, the link is in the description. I offer source code, early access to videos, exclusive content, and more. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.